Okay, welcome back to the next list. And we're going to be talking about risk management in trading. Before we get on to working out our risk on each trade, that's so important. I actually found some really old trading statements from when I went on holiday uh, with my family in August. So I'm going to walk you through what the statements mean because you're going to receive trading statements through to your email every single day. And you need to know what they actually mean. You can see here on the left hand side, it's there's a closing reference for this trade. Um, and there's the close date and time for that trade. Here's an opening reference for that trade. Here's an opening time and date for that trade. Wow, back in 2018. It's a long time ago, this guys. And then the market is the Great British Pound versus the US dollar. Now, this was a daily funded bet. All that means is I'm basically placing a daily funded bet and it's likely to be closed at the end of the day. Now, I don't want to get too involved in this, but when you're doing daily funded bets, a lot of brokers will charge you overnight fees. So you're borrowing money on leverage to trade here. A lot of brokers will give you like 30 to 1 leverage. And, you know, otherwise you'd have to put all the money up. We're, we're buying leveraged products. We put a deposit down in our account. Well, it's not a deposit. Let's say you put £2,000 down in your account. You'll get 30 times that ability to buy all these markets, okay? And when you run out of leverage, let's say your position sizing is too much, they won't allow you to place the trade. But when I'm doing a daily funded bet, because they're lending me that money in that short period while the trade's open, they're going to charge me interest on it. And here's a borrowing fee here of £2.70 on this particular currency pair. Each currency pair borrowing fees and each market's borrowing fees will be completely different. There is a big section most on most brokers' websites about borrowing charges. The longer you hold a trade for, let's say you held a trade for six months, you don't want to use the daily funded bet option. You want to put in a futures uh, expiry date, which would be something like the next quarter, business quarter, like March, December, September, and June. Um, and what happens then is that the all the fees are in that quarterly contract. If you're doing short-term trade in less than six weeks, then you're probably just going to do the daily, regular daily funded bet. This is the direction, the buy, and this is my position size here for a spread bet, £3 a point. Very small positions because I'm on holiday here with the family. Opening price was 131.45.1. Closing price was 131.55. The trade was done in Great British Pounds. And you can change the currency. P&L is £29.70. Borrowing charge is £2.70. Um, £27 profit. <laughs> okay, really small position size. But these couple of decent trades here, 300, 400, 300, 238 pounds. A couple of losing trades here as well. Boogaloo, small ones. All right, so that doesn't matter. So there is, you know, just a statement, which is quite funny, in fact, and interesting. Here's a, another one. All the same stuff. Open, closing reference, date and times, buyers and sales. Uh, any funding in there? He has a bit of funding uh, and so on. Okay, mornings, trades. And by the way, when you're doing spread betting, all these profits are tax free. You do not have to declare them to the tax man. They are literally uh, profits in your back pocket. Well, that sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? Put it in your back pocket, but it is. It is. You do not have to pay tax on your profits whatsoever in here. Okay, so some more day trading stuff. If you're using a spread bet, that is. And there's some more a bit bigger position sizes here as we start to ramp up the day trades. Um, 12 pounds and, and so on okay my position size gets up to you know around the 40 50 pounds at a point when I'm doing FX um, you know it depends really how much risk I want to put on the trades and we're going to talk about that in the next lesson guys and um, you know even if you're doing bigger position size per trade doesn't mean that person is a particularly good trader um, You've got to manage risk. If you manage risk, you'll stay in this business for a very long time. Those that don't manage risk, and we're going to talk about that in the next lessons because this is really important. If you don't manage risk, you're out the game. All right? We'll talk about that now. Let's go on to the next lesson. But there's a, some statements from 2017, 2018. I think they were. Great. Nice to see some of the stuff I was doing then as well. Still plugging away, doing the same things. Let's be just...